What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Kicker Scuba and Marina, and in today's video, we're actually gonna go out on a search and recovery, but not just any normal search and recovery. We're gonna go out on one that's already been conducted, and unfortunately, items were not able to be recovered by it. But before we get to that, I've gotta get some gear here, so check out my new rack, by the way. This is the new rack I've got built for my dry suits. That way I can hang them all up, spread them out, let them dry out, and they're just not all piled up on everything. But we're gonna go out and do a search and recovery here. And this was actually conducted yesterday by one of our divers. And unfortunately, he was unsuccessful in locating the item that he was looking for. Now, it doesn't mean that the search and recovery itself was unsuccessful. It just means he was unable to find the object for whatever reason. And I'm gonna give you the backstory to this object to make it a little bit easier, hopefully, for me to find. Let me get some undergarments here. Hopefully, it'll make it a little bit easier for me to find it as well. But in short, a gentleman had lost his cell phone at the end of the dock and he took a rake and was raking down into the silt and the mud to try to locate that cell phone. And unfortunately, he never could get it. So several days go by, he gives us a call and he says, hey, can you come out and search for this object? Sure, where's it at? Well, it's at the end of the dock or actually the front side of the dock, but it's on the inside. So think of a boathouse where you walk down a ramp into it and then he lost it where the boat would actually be docked in there. Um, it's only about six foot deep, and you would think, well, that's an easy dive. You don't even need scuba gear for it. You'd basically just free dive down, and of course you can locate it. But here's the problem. If you remember several videos back when we talked about uh, the waves, tides, and currents class and how water movement goes through our lake and how our lake fluctuates, well, at the time when he dropped his phone, the lake was about 10 foot deep. Now it's only about six foot deep now. So that means there's a four foot fluctuation in the, the height or the depth of the water. And we understand by drop radius, when an object falls through the water column, it can move the equal amount of distance of whatever the depth was. So yesterday when my employee was searching, he was searching in six foot and he was searching a six, six foot radius. But like I said, the water was at 10 foot whenever the gentleman dropped his phone. So we're gonna go back today and we're gonna do a 10 foot radius search of where that phone could be or from where he actually dropped it at. The other thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna be doing some digging. Now I already know that the visibility is not gonna be good at, at all, but we are gonna be digging down because what we feel like has happened, we do feel like the phone is there, but we feel like as he was raking, he raked some debris and stuff up over the top and with the visibility as bad as it was and with the lack of dexterity that my staff had because he had thick dry gloves on, maybe he's just unable to find it. But we feel confident that we're gonna find that phone today. So we're gonna, I gotta run my kids over to school real quick and then we're gonna drop down to the docks and jump in and hopefully help this guy find his phone. All right, let's jump right into this search and recovery. Um, this is actually not far from our shop here. It's just right up the lake or right up the cove area from the marina. But, um, and like I stated earlier, the the last point seen of this, this object, this cell phone that I'm after, is actually right inside this boat dock here. So as we walk in, you'll see the slip where the boat's docked up and right here is basically where the gentleman dropped it. Now during this dive it's only about four and a half to five foot feet. The water has come down a little bit. It was six foot yesterday but when the gentleman dropped it it was around that 10 foot mark. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make my entry well enough away from where he dropped it. And that way I'm not really stirring up the bottom um, by simply jumping in right there. But you will notice that as I jumped in my feet did touch uh, and you'll see that that silt cloud come up and kind of start to um, black out the area. Now, I do want you to notice as I'm searching here, you'll start noticing that silt cloud that I just created, um, it will start to creep up on me. So I've got a very limited time to search before that silt cloud gets up. And basically all I'm doing is just browsing over the top with my light, hoping to you know catch a glimmer or something of the foam um, before that silt cloud gets up. Now, like I said, I did have one of my staff members searching for this phone yesterday and couldn't find it at all so I really wasn't expecting to to be able to find it with my light uh, I was just you know best case scenario oops there it is and then pick it up but I'm just going to do a quick sweep here before that silk cloud and as you can see that silk cloud starting to come in now the reason that's happening the reason that silk clouds coming in is we do have a reverse flow today so instead of the water getting pushed out by the creek area here in the cove and going out in the main channel that water is actually being pulled back into the creek area because of the reverse flow and so where I'm actually located that silk clouds actually being pushed in towards land and back in towards the cove area 
But here, briefly, it will seal it out completely, and I'll actually start the digging process. Now, I know somebody's going to ask, why didn't you just jump in with a metal detector? And I very easily could have done that, but if I was to stand up right now where I'm at, it's only about four and a half foot deep, and because I'm doing this in a solo situation, I really didn't want to take all that extra equipment with me, and it, it's not that difficult for me to just kind of lay there and dig in the silt and the mud. But you'll see how quickly what that causes is a total blackout out and you'll see that once I start digging um, and it doesn't take much you see I just barely touched the bottom there with my flashlight started to stir it up um, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start the digging process or start uh, searching via digging now the way that I do this I want you to just kind of picture it for a, for a second I'm laying on my belly and I'm gonna start everything on the right hand side so I'm gonna take my right arm start about shoulder height and I'm just gonna start digging and I'm gonna extend my arm straight out in front of me as far as I can as I'm digging so here I'm starting about shoulder height or about you know right where my viz or right where my head is and I'm just gonna start digging and I'm digging just a couple inches at a time uh, because I got my theory is here the gentleman just covered it up with a bunch of silt and debris as he was raking for it but once I'm unable to locate it then I'm gonna extend my arm completely out in front of me and continue to dig and I'm gonna sweep over to the right as I do this and I'm just searching at arm's length and so as I dig from top to bottom then I'll kind of sweep my arm out search top to bottom or dig top to bottom and then sweep it out again and this is actually what we do if we're looking sometimes for a smaller object that has been buried um, if we don't have a metal detector we'll do a very methodical search simply by sweeping and as you can see just as soon as you start digging bubbles start coming up silt the silt cloud comes up and here in a minute it, it, I promise you it's gonna go pitch black but once I've ex exhausted my search with my right arm then I'm gonna kind of stay anchored exactly where I'm at and I'm going to use my left arm and I'm going to do the exact same thing. So I'll start at say shoulder level, start digging down and then I'm going to start sweeping all the way over to the left. And by sweeping I'm really doing a, think of a semi-circle search in one location without having to use ropes or lines or anything like that. Um, and it's going to make it a very methodical search for me. And like I said, I am having to dig down in the debris and the silt because we know that that phone's covered up. I clearly could not find it uh, just during the initial search there, so I know I'm having to dig for it. But once I've exhausted both the right side and the left side, then I'm actually going to turn my body and face the opposite direction. Um, and what that allows me to do is search everywhere where my legs were. And I can do a very methodical search uh, here you can see it didn't take me very long digging but I can do a very methodical search uh, of the area without really having to move anywhere um, and if you do notice I'm not wearing gloves this water is very cold we're still in the winter months here at the marina um, and the water is cold. It's probably in the uh, high 40s to low 50s. Uh, but the reason I chose not to wear gloves, I needed the dexterity to be able to feel that phone as I was digging down through the bottom. But it was a very successful search. Uh, I hope you guys learned from this. I hope you uh, can see that sometimes there's more to it than just jumping in and looking with a flashlight. Sometimes we do have to dig down underneath the bottom. Um, but if you do it right, you do it safe, you can have a successful search just like this. All right, guys, that's the phone. Difficult search, very shallow water, probably four feet today. Originally, it was six feet yesterday, but you can see water fluctuates. That phone was actually buried up underneath all that grind that you saw originally, all those tree limbs. Everything that was down there had been covered up on top of that phone by the owner raking the rake through and just covering it up and when you get out there and do search and recoveries there's a lot of things that your instructor is going to teach you stuff like that he's not you just got to be persistent with it and just keep searching don't give up especially when you know that it's there and you can be just as successful as i was but guys if you like the video give me a big thumbs up uh as you can tell my hands are blistering red it's extremely cold in that water still today and I did it with no gloves just so that I could have the dexterity that I needed to get out there and look. But I'm going to get out of my gear real quick 
and I'm gonna go get some breakfast because I'm starving. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.